Hi, you might be wondering why you're looking at a pair of Newtone IM4006 Master Stations, but it's a trick because they're not both 4006s. This one is an IM4006, but this one's not. This is something that's different. This is a Newtone model PTX1201, and a PTX1201 was the music center for the Newtone PTX1200 personal telephone exchange system that they made in the late 1980s. In 1988, Newtone subcontracted with a private company to make a personal telephone exchange system. And as an option, you could have music on hold. And if you chose that option, you would use a PTX1201 AM FM cassette player. It's not an intercom system, it's just a radio master station or what we would call a music center. So let's take a look at the differences between an IM4006 and a PTX1201. This PTX1201 was sent in to me from a fairly local customer. They're only about 30 miles from here down in Silicon Valley, California. And it was put in her townhouse when it was built back in 1989. But she doesn't have the PT1200 telephone exchange part of the system. This was installed just as a music center and she has some new tone IS1205 music speakers throughout her townhouse. And she sent it in to me because it does this. And she'd really like to get it repaired. For all of the differences between an IM4006 and a PTX1201, they do share a lot of common design aspects and common circuit boards. The primary differences are You'll see here there are no intercom control switches behind the left hand panel because it's not an intercom system. It's just a music center. You have no intercom buttons here like you have on the 4006 because again it's not an intercom system. You do have a master speaker volume and a tone control. And down here you still have system volume which sets the maximum music level throughout the house plus a loudness control. There's nothing here behind the right hand door. The cassette player, the tuner, and the display are the same, but it just lacks all of the circuitry that makes the intercom system work. They suffer from the same problems as 4006s, and this particular one, the loud hum, is from a failed power supply and that needs to be rebuilt along with the other boards, which will renew it and make it work just like new. So looking at the back of the two sets, this is the IM4006, and this is the PTX1201. And you can see that this is the back of the display assembly, which is the same on the 1201. Here we have the cassette player on the 1201, and it's the same as the 4006. Down here below the cassette player, we have the AM FM tuner board which is the same on the PTX1201. This particular 4006 has an expansion kit, which is what this extra board here is, which you would never have in a PTX1201. Where you start to see some of the differences are, on the 4006, you have the intercom control board on the back of the chassis assembly. That's this large circuit board here that has all of the interconnect ribbons that tie it into a standard 4006 terminal board and here you can see that board is absent from this design half of the chassis assembly is exposed and then we have this small little custom board here this is simply an audio interface board it has some power it has a place where a chime module could be connected in because a PTX1201 could use a standard Newtone chime module it has some connections to tie it into the PTX1201 telephone control unit with a volume adjustment for that tie-in. And then it has the wiring where you connect the remote speakers to it. There is no standard terminal board. You just wire nut all of the wires together. You were limited on the number of stations you could have. I think the maximum number was nine remote stations uh, to play music. And then down here, 
which is a little hard to see, so I'll show you after I take it out. This would, this would be in a IM4006. This is the master control board. It has the on-off switch, and in this case, just the master speaker volume and tone control. It's missing a lot of, there's a lot of unpopulated spots on this board, including unpopulated connectors, and a lot of components aren't there because it doesn't have any intercom functions. It doesn't need to interconnect into the intercom control board because there isn't an intercom control board. And then down here, which I'll, when I take it out, I'll show you, this would be, this is the back of the left-hand panel where all of the room control switches and intercom volume adjustment would be. And that's all missing on that board because you don't need it. So it's a variation on a standard IM4006. And while that might seem kind of odd, it's not really that odd for Newtone to do something like this. Back in the late 1950s, when Newtone was manufacturing the N2561-62, at the same time, for a very short period of time, they made an office telephone system, which I'm sorry, it wasn't a telephone system, it was an office intercom system. And they made a modified version of an N2561 that could be used as a music source to play through the intercom system. I have never seen one of those and I don't think it was a very popular uh, design. And then in the design, and then in the early 1960s, they made a variation of the model 2071 which was a stereo music intercom master station and they created it into a self-contained wall-mounted music center where the 2071 was just an AM FM stereo receiver and amplifier it had a fold-down turntable and a pair of stereo speakers and it actually came with a bracket and it was essentially hang on the wall it wasn't actually built into it. So they've done this kind of thing in the past and this would have been probably the last version of a music only center that they made. So let's go ahead and take out, take the PTX 1201 apart and I'll show you some of the difference. Here we're looking at the two master control boards. This is out of an IM4006 and this is out of the PTX 1201. And you can see there are some interesting differences between the two boards. We'll start on this side. You can see how there's, there's a connector here that's been left off. There's this cable assembly that would have been here that's missing. There's a variety of small components that are missing. We have an, a relay here which is missing on the PTX1201 board. One of the more interesting things is here we have on the 4006 board we have the inside patio talk, door talk, and end call push buttons. And here we have the same three push buttons, however, the plunger assemblies are missing from inside the switches. Like here, it's missing here, and so forth. So it obviously was easier to manufacture this by putting this in place and just leaving the, switch, the plunger assemblies out of the switches, which I think is kind of weird. Uh, there's also some ground wires, the blue ground wire and the gray and the brown ground wire are missing. So there's just a lot of little subtle differences where they left out components that were unnecessary because there's no intercom function. Here you can see the two different switchboard assemblies. This one is out of the 4006 and you have the nine room control switches here plus the intercom volume adjustment. This is system volume and loudness on and off. And you can see on the PTX1201 board, all of this is left completely unpopulated. There's no switches at all. There's no intercom volume pot. You do have the system pot and the loudness switch. And then you have this cable assembly, which is the same as this, minus a few wires, but all of these other cable assemblies, which are all intercom related, are all missing. They would have been attached in here, 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 and here. So it's a real stripped down board. Here you can see the biggest difference between these two boards. This is the intercom control board out of an IM4006, and this is the audio interface board out of a PTX1201. Uh, there's virtually nothing on here. You have a, a linear voltage regulator 
an adjustment control for the volume sent to the PTX1200 personal telephone exchange unit. You have a chime module interface, some audio input connectors. There's really nothing here. Some sockets for interconnect wires. Com by comparison, this board probably cost virtually nothing to have manufactured compared to what you have here. And this is really the heart of the intercom system in a 4006, where this is just an audio distribution board out of a PTX-1201. So here are the owner's manuals for the two pieces in a PTX system. Here's the owner's manual for a PTX-1200, which is Newtone's personal telephone exchange system. And don't let the picture on the front of the manual deceive you. This, this unit here is huge. I think it's almost two feet square and it's about eight inches deep. It's a great big giant thing. I remember the first time I ever saw one in someone's home, it's like, what is that thing doing here? Uh, it's really very large. And then here we have the auxiliary PTX-1201 AM FM radio cassette player recorder. So, and here they show an optional telephone handset that could be mounted on the wall next to it. This, I assume, would tie into the PTX-1200, so you would have Inter or telephone functions next to the, your music center. This was not a very popular model as far as I know. I think in the 29 years that I've been doing this, I've only ever seen one or two, and I don't think other than those two, I've ever had a call to do anything on them. So they're pretty rare. The reason that my customer's townhouse has a PTX-1201 is a local distributor back in the early 90s, I think, bought up all of this equipment when it was discontinued and installed it probably over the next six or eight years in different developments and projects as they came along. So she just has the music center without the telephone. Here are the installation instructions for the PTX-1200. You can see the PTX-1200 here in the drawing. And here we have the optional PTX-1201 AM FM cassette player. It shows the uh, block in the block diagram. You can have an optional record changer. You can have an optional source cassette customer supplied. I'm not sure why you'd want that. There's already a cassette in there. Uh, this is pre-CDs or early days of CDs, so most people didn't have that yet. Here we have the optional chime module. We've got some wiring that can go to indoor large indoor stations, large outdoor stations. Here we have more in small inside speakers. The IS-1205s were a uh, simplified version of an IS-405. They did pretty much the same thing they did with the master station or the radio station. Uh, master. Uh, they took an IS-405, which is the remote station for an IM-4006. They removed the intercom control buttons, changed the faceplate, and just put a volume control. So they're just essentially Newtone 5-inch speakers with a volume control. So you could have that. It shows how you can wire in a phone. You can have a door speaker. I'm not sure how you use the door speaker. I think it was used through the telephone handsets. And then over here, they give just a little bit of a nod towards how you wire up the phones on the system. It shows it actually being wired with four conductor phone cable and some Newtone IW2S, which I'm not sure what that was for exactly. I've never installed one of these, so I don't know. Uh, you could have a telephone ringer, inc two incoming phone lines. Uh, it looks like a pretty standard type of system. Here inside on the first two pages, it, here's the basic layout of the control unit. We have the system board here. We have a paging music amp board here. This is probably where the PTX-1201 ties in for the music. You have a terminal board here for your home telephone wiring. And it shows here that it has the ability of being wired for up to 12 phones in a home. It came with six standard and then there were six optional slots and you would buy these interface cards and they would plug into the control unit for one for every station or every telephone that you would uh, include in your home. You have terminal board wiring down here, a worksheet for the installer to keep track of what he was doing, how to wire up a door speaker, Looks like the door speaker was wired in as sort of a semi phone station, so it was accessed through the telephone handsets. 
You had external relays, remote relay controls, that would be for door releases or some other function like that. And that's pretty much it. So here in the PTX 1200 owner's manual, we just look at the contents to see some of the features. You would have call forwarding, call on hold, call park, which I'm not sure what that is, call transfer, call waiting, outside calls, internal calls, which I suppose would take place of having an actual intercom system. You could have conference call, door chime, door speaker, home sentry, last number redial, long distance, programming and accessing with a special carrier, whatever that means. One of the things you have to keep in mind is this was all designed back in the 80s uh, before things like Panasonic in-home phone systems uh, were available and before cell phones existed. And it's really more like an office exchange system then that's designed for your home. Um, you have music broadcast, music on hold, optional features offered by your telephone company, outside telephone calls, paging, power failure operation, private extensions. So it has a lot of features. Uh, the pro biggest problem with telephone systems in people's homes were they didn't understand how to use them. Too many features, too many options, too complicated to um, operate and probably too expensive. I looked, I couldn't find a sales brochure for this and I couldn't find a price for it back in 88, but I'm pretty sure it was pretty expensive. So we have call parking, call waiting, home sentry, music broadcast. So it has a lot of features, but I'm pretty sure it was probably a nightmare to own. And then also around this time is when inexpensive cordless phones started to become really popular and inexpensive answering machines started to become really popular. And I know on other telephone products that Newtone made around the same time, there was a lot of compatibility issues and that killed some intercom systems that had telephone incorporated into them and this might have suffered the same fate. Anyway, that's a brief look at the differences between an IM4006 and a PTX1201 with a little bit of an overview of a PTX 1200. Maybe if I ever get one in one day that I get to keep, I'll take it apart and show you what it looks like. I don't expect the repair on the PTX 1201 to be anything spectacular. It's just like doing a 4006 with just a little bit less that you have to do. So I hope you found this a little bit interesting. And if you have a PTX 1201 and it has problems, it's not hopeless and it's not an orphan. It can easily be repaired. So don't let people tell you it can't be. I hope you find our videos to be interesting and helpful. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up on YouTube. If you would subscribe to our channel, we would appreciate it. It raises our search rankings on YouTube, which means more people find our videos. That's all for today. See you on the next video.